Moving on to sound intensity. Imagine we have an idealized point of sound that operates in a free and unbounded medium where there are no reflecting surfaces or energy absorbing materials that would affect the sound transmission in any way and the sound energy is transferred uniformly throughout the medium in all directions. Sort of like this example of this figure over there. So the sound is just traveling outward from a source. So last, last video we spoke about acoustic power, but now we're going to talk about the sound intensity. So that the power that acts on or dissipated through a much smaller area. And the smaller area that we're talking about is a square meter. So we speak of energy per second meter squared. We're talking about the intensity of the sound wave. If we're just talking about the energy per second, then we're talking about acoustic power. So now we're talking about the intensity of the sound wave. The intensity is the amount of energy transmitted per second over an area of a square meter. And if the unit of measure for the acoustic power was the watt, also known as the energy per second, and intensity is the energy per second per square meter, then the unit of measure for intensity is the watt per square meter. So we're just adding this square meter into the equation now. And we do the same thing where we had an absolute and a relative value. So just as sound power could be expressed in absolute or relative terms, so can sound intensity. If we say that a sound has an intensity of 10 to the negative 8 watt per meter squared, we're talking about an absolute intensity because we're using that watt per meter squared. Alternatively, we can speak of a relative intensity or the level of intensity by reference to some kind of ratio that was used. So level is a relative value. We have an absolute compared to an absolute reference. So Ix over Ir. And over here, you'll see how the values will change, the relative values change based on the reference. So the left column is an absolute intensity. The middle and the right column, you have two references. You have I, X, I reference 10 to the negative 10, that would be your base reference, or a reference of 10 to the negative 12. Putting together that ratio, I, X over a reference, you get the values below. So if you were to use the reference, the first one, 10 to the negative 8, and compare it to 10 to the negative 10, your relative measure is 10 to the 2. But if you take that original absolute value, 10 to the negative 8, and you change the reference to 10 to the negative 12, your new relative value is 10 to the 4. So you see how comparing down the line, now look at 10 to the negative 9th, compare it to the reference 10 to the negative 10, and you get a relative value of 10 to the 1st. If you took that absolute value 10 to the negative 9 and you compared it to a reference of 10 to the negative 12, you're going to get a relative value of 10 to the 3rd. So again, remember I said the references are really important. Go back to that biggest loser example I gave before. It, your answer, your relative answer will depend on your reference level. And if you remember, we're using the law of exponents. So we're just um, manipulating the exponents with these figures, with these formulas. 